I'm Sarah Hewen, joined by Scott Deacon, Non-Executive Director of Caprice Resources. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having us. Hi, Scott. Caprice recently appointed experienced CEO Luke Cox. Can you tell us a bit about him and what his appointment means for the company? Yeah, sure. So we ran an executive search process to appoint Luke. Uh, We evaluated a number of high quality individuals before ultimately appointing Luke. Uh, He brings a really good blend of exploration, resource definition and mining experience from an extensive career in the industry um, and in conjunction with that, the finance industry as well. So we feel he's imminently qualified to drive Caprice's next stage of exploration and discovery. Um, You know, pertinently, his recent experience as CEO of Green Technology Metals is highly analogous to the pathway uh, ahead of Caprice. He was the inaugural CEO um, for GT1 when they went through IPO, leading through to the delineation of, I think, over 20 million tonnes of lithium in Canada. So, you know, he was um, seminal in establishing the exploration teams, the strategy, building relationships with First Nations people in country, and really driving those exploration activities, which is all ahead of us um, at Caprice. Impressive. And the company has recently acquired a project in the highly prospective West Arunta region. What are the objectives there? Yeah, we have. Look, we're really excited about this. Um, It was a project that we identified as having the potential to deliver, I guess, a considerable company making discovery and ideally something you know, tier one. Um, it drew us towards the West Arunta region. It's a frontier exploration search base and province that hasn't had a lot of modern exploration applied and largely been overlooked as too challenging. Um, fortunately for us, the likes of Agriman, Tali, uh, obviously Encounter and WA1 have demonstrated the feasibility of exploration in the region and, lo- and unlocking the region. And then, of course, the world-class discoveries of Looney, P2, uh, and encounters green, Emily and green. And, and obviously those Niobium discoveries have opened up a new search space um, entirely. Previously, the region was thought uh, prospective for, for copper gold. And so we'll certainly look through the lens of both of those exploration models and methodologies um, and ultimately hope to make a, a similar you know, class of discovery. Absolutely. And finally, Scott, what else is on the horizon for Caprice Resources? For us, it's getting on the ground uh, as quickly as possible and expediting that journey. And and Luke's going to play a key role in that and has already hit the ground running, driving relations with the Kirikara people and the Jammu Jammu groups. From a technical perspective, um, it's gaining high resolution geophysics. A lot of the information we've put out in the ASX announcements to date has been publicly available data, which has flown on sort of 1.5 by 1.5 kilometre resolution as opposed to what you may see of some of the peer companies um, in Encounter WA1 and Rincon, which is generally 50 metre, a 50 metre resolution. So you can see that that difference in, in resolution and then hopefully that leads to the generation of, of multiple drilling targets, which will then you know, aggressively pursue. More broadly, we're also looking at some complementary land packages within the Western Winter region. Um, and concurrent with that, Luke's driving a review of our Murchison Gold projects and the Muck and Boudin Rare Earths projects with a view that we either commercialise uh, one or both of those projects or recommence exploration across those, uh, across those projects. So quite an exciting period of time ahead for Cabrice. Thanks for your time, Scott. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for having us.